All right, so let's talk about PreSonus Studio One version 7 and this new feature called Stem Separation. You might be interested in upgrading to version 7. I'll just tell you, I've got a few videos that have come across like their hot takes on whether you should upgrade to version 7 or not. I'm not going to address that in this video. Let me just say that if you're somebody that's been using Studio One since version 3, version 4, 5, or 6, and you're looking to upgrade to version 7, it may not be worth the money for you to upgrade. That's all I'm gonna say. So uh, whether you upgrade to version seven or not, that's totally up to you. If you decide to upgrade to version seven, there is a feature that is unique to version seven and that's called stem separation. So I'm gonna speak on a very beginner friendly level here and let's just talk about what is stem separation. So Studio One is labeling stem separation as a process by which you can take a recorded track, like a finished song, it's a two track, it's just a stereo mix of whatever you want. It could be a Bruno Mars song. It could be one of your own productions for sure. You can drag and drop it into Studio One. And then what it's going to do using some sort of artificial intelligence, it's going to be able to separate that track into stems which is why they call it stem separation. Now these stems are gonna be quite limited for now. So the stems that you're getting are a vocal track, a drums track, a bass track, and then one they're calling other, which you'll see in just a few minutes. Uh, the other track is basically all the other instruments like pianos, guitars, synthesizers, and so forth. Now pretty much every like example of the stem separation that I've seen on YouTube has strictly been with like EDM music and it's not a knock on EDM, but I think that electronic music in general, since it's built in that world of like MIDI notes and everything's quantized, I think it kind of gives the stem separation a better example when they're creating it. So obviously go for EDM, but I'm gonna be showing you some examples of like quote unquote real music. Like I've got a song that has an upright piano, some acoustic guitar stuff going on. We're gonna see how well stem separation can do the job. So my first question you probably want answered is who is this for? If you're interested in upgrading to version seven of Studio One, you probably want to have a reason to do so. It does cost money. Now stem separation, I see it mainly being used by people who are like, have you ever been asked to sing a song at a funeral, maybe even to play at a funeral or a wedding or a party? I don't, I don't know what the situation may be, but think about that person who is basically singing to a track, or maybe you do covers online. So it might be more ac applicable that you're like a YouTuber, you're one of these influencers, you play guitar, but you want to get tracks that don't have vocals in them. Maybe you want to throw off the algorithm or whatever. Well, you'll be able to drop your track in, remove the vocal, and then you can play guitar on top of a song. Or if you do drum covers, you can mute the drums track and play along with the bass, the vocal, and the other. So that's kind of the application going forward. I imagine most of you are going to be doing cover songs, but for those of you out there that do live performances and you want to get rid of the vocal track so you can sing your own vocal to it, that would be the application. Now let's talk about, is it easy? Okay, uh, I think it definitely is easy. You do need to have it installed on your copy of Studio One. So if I jump up here to Studio One, make sure you go into Studio One and then Studio One installation. And then once you've got installations open, checking for updates, uh, when you scroll down, there should be a section. Let's see, I've already got it downloaded. So installed content. Let's see, where did they move this thing to? There should be one, there it is. Okay, stem separation. Just be aware that we're looking at well over one gigabyte of information. So you do need to have some space available, but it is an extension. So when you're installing PreSonus Studio One, if you don't have it already installed, make sure that's checked and then make sure you have it installed and then you're good to go. Okay, now once everything is installed, it's very easy to use. You drop your waveform in, as we'll see in just a second, you right click and then you say, separate into stems. As soon as you do, it mutes the original and you can listen to what you're doing. So again, uh, I want to clarify, you do need to have version seven of Studio One to make this work. I believe you can get the subscription plan. Subscription plans with Studio One will give you, should give you access to all of their features. It's on a month to month basis. I'm sure you can save some money by doing an annual plan, but look for stuff to be on sale because I believe when I updated to version seven of Studio One, I had to pay like the quote unquote full price of like 150 bucks. And now I pretty regularly see it. They're selling it for like a hundred. So 
I can be upset about that, but let's just move on. So uh, how do you do it? Let's jump in and actually take this for a listen. So I've got a few songs I want to try out. Uh, both of these are available at greenfamilymusic.com where you can actually download these sessions themselves. But I'm just going to drag in this song here called Nothing Less. Now, Nothing Less is a song that my wife and I recorded a few years ago. You can see videos about it here on YouTube where I break down the mix. I believe this is one of those situations where we use nothing but stock plugins, but everything that you're hearing from the drums, all the instruments were recorded in very much a live situation. This kind of fits within the worship music genre. So we'll take a listen to the song just for a little bit so you can hear what we're dealing with, and then we will use the stem separation. So if you've recently used the separate stems, then you're just gonna be looking right click anywhere and then go to separate stems. Here we go. Now, as soon as you click the button, it's gonna ask you which stems do you want. For the most part, you're probably gonna to wanna to have all four of these checked. If you only wanted to have maybe the drums, bass, and other, you know that you don't want the vocal, you can just leave it unselected. I'm just gonna check it off. So we have all four of these selected and I'm gonna click okay. Now the algorithm is gonna do its thing. I'll see in real time how long this is taking. So it says time remaining 30 seconds, 30 seconds or so. It's not too bad. I mean, definitely if you were doing this on your own, there are AI programs out there that can certainly do the trick. I don't know how much they cost, but this isn't too bad. In real time, this took about 20 seconds. I would guess. Okay, so that didn't take very long whatsoever. Now we've got a folder that says nothing less stems and inside nothing less stems, we have our vocals track, we have our drums track, we have our bass track, and then we have the other track. Now I'm instantly wondering how things turned out. Let's jump to verse two and take a listen to how the vocals turned out. I'll solo the vocal track. So nothing you're hearing right now is gonna be the original. The original is up here, it's been grayed out, it has been muted. This is what the stem separation tool came up with. When on that day his trumpet sounds, my soul will then in him be found. My joy will be, my faith will rest in Christ alone. Um, it's okay. Uh, I definitely, I think it's about what you would expect. I mean, AI has certainly done some amazing things. Recently, I wouldn't say that AI has blown me away with anything that I've heard before. It definitely sounds like it's got some artifacts going on. Uh, it is neat that it has a little bit of the reverb on there, but everything sounds like it's gated pretty heavily. So it's gated so much that the background vocals are basically gone. So this is not saying that it's vocals like all of your vocals. This is mainly just getting that lead vocal. What I can imagine is happening, this is totally me just speculating right here, but everything's pretty much down to panning. So I'd imagine what would happen if the lead vocal were not right down the middle. Uh, the fact that it got rid of the background vocals tells me that it's trying to carve out that middle space of where the vocals are. And just again, speculating here, we've got drums, bass, other, and vocals. You think those are very frequency dependent. It's pretty easy to find the drums. Drums are kind of predictably on the beat. They should be on the beat. Bass guitar is going to be a lot of low end information. Other is going to be that swirly stuff in the middle. And then the vocals will have all the S's and T's and articulation there, but definitely sounds usable. I mean, it comes with version seven, so you're not having to pay extra for it if you already have version seven. But let's take a listen now to all these stems together. Same part on verse two. Here's what the stem tracks sound like. In Christ alone, I place my trust, the sweet all right, let's solo the drums here. Yeah, it's like, again, I'm hearing this like, it's very gated. There's something going on with the EQ. It sounds like at certain times the drums have like this crispiness to them and then they're kind of swimming underwater. It's pretty expected. Let's take a listen to the bass track. Yeah, that, that one's probably the worst. Uh, that is probably egregious. Uh, I don't have any effects on my bass guitar. So bass guitar, I pretty, I'm pretty simple. I'll go direct into my interface. I'll put some compression. I'll do a little bit of EQ, but I definitely don't have any like phasers or flangers. Uh, there's something going on with the phase. 
on that bass guitar for sure. Now let's take a listen to other, and then we're going to start muting some of these for that application I was talking about earlier. Here's the other track. Yeah, it doesn't really sound like anything. Like it makes the instrument sound like they're one synthesizer. Uh, there should be acoustic guitar, there should be piano, there should be electric guitar. And I get it that it's gonna be difficult. Like it's kind of a high bar being set to say that it's going to stem separate stuff. Um, now, again, like I was saying before, if you're doing like EDM music, something that's really on the grid, you have very quantized and predictable sounds. I imagine it's going to do a better job, but I kind of have a feeling that more organic music, meaning like acoustic guitars, maybe not so much. Now, here's the big situation. What if you mute the vocal and you just want to have like a sing along, more of like a karaoke track? Let's take a listen. All right, and just in case your ears have kind of gotten used to the sound, I do want to remind you, here's what the original sounded like on that section. Okay, so what it reminds me of is very much like back in the day, you know, when you would go on sites that weren't exactly known for doing stuff legally. Uh, you would find these karaoke or instrumental tracks, and maybe at the beginning of the song, it would say something like a DJ's name, and then the music would fade in. It always had this kind of sound. It always had that like karaoke track version where you knew there was some sort of tool that was just like squishing things around. Uh, it very much sounds like a poorly converted mp3 file if that makes sense so like when you find a really low quality or somebody that recorded something off of a youtube video it's definitely got that same kind of vibe now it is useful so if you're in a pinch you needed a song that didn't have the vocals in it if you're singing live like if you have a microphone and you're going to sing this song you've got a backing track available it's not going to be like the greatest backing track sound ever but i definitely could see how this would be useful again if you're in a pinch or if you're somebody that you're doing a song maybe you're singing amazing grace at somebody's wedding and let's just say the piano player had to bail on you you're a singer you don't know how to play the instruments maybe they can send you a waveform you drop it in the studio one stem separation and now you got at least something that is usable but i can see why it's not getting pushed out as much i haven't seen a whole lot of people talking about the stem separation being particularly fantastic. But as you can see, it has the potential of growing. Um, I guess if they were able to somehow separate more stems, they could get a little bit more specific. Like I would like personally to see something where maybe my acoustic guitars are in a separate track from my electric guitars. That's a pretty common thing. Like acoustic guitars usually don't sound like electric guitars. I would like to see an acoustic guitar track. I'd like to see a piano track. Uh, if you're talking about this application of somebody singing to something that's already been recorded, most songs are going to have piano. Most songs are going to have or piano or an acoustic guitar as kind of like the main instrument. But again, this is probably something created more for the folks in EDM world. Let's back up just a little bit and I'll stop smashing on stem separation. I just want to drop this one song in. This is George is Still on My Mind. This is very much an acoustic song. You're not going to find any drums in this whatsoever. Let's just take a listen. Said love don't ever change with time Cause Georgia still is always on my mind Yeah, Georgia still is always on my mind so I want to see how it does with acoustic. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to separate stems. I keep looking for stem separation, but separate stems. Let's just go ahead. There's no 
uh, drums, but let's just see if it thinks there are drums. One, two, three, four. This this totally reminds me like when it says their software updating could take about an hour, and then you think to yourself like. That's probably going to be like 20 minutes. Uh, it started off with like two minutes. Now it's saying 10 seconds. It's pretty quick. I wouldn't say that's a hold up with this whatsoever. All right, acoustic guitar. Let's take a listen to how it is. We'll go later into the song where there's more stuff. And that Chattahoochee still runs through my veins. Now, in this song, it being so like singer songwriter acoustic y, um, there would be some vibe being added to it. But you can notice that whenever the vocal was supposed to be singing, everything just got a little bit duller. And then it brightened up when the vocal had finished. That tells me that there's definitely some like gating EQ happening. And again, I don't think it's that bad. Like, if you're singing where that happens, people are not going to notice the backing track doing that as much because your vocal is going to be taking up that space in the frequency spectrum. So all in all, it's, uh, it's pretty decent. I think that it's not something that, again, if you're looking to upgrade to version seven to studio one, if you have a very specific use case for this, if you're doing, like I said, if you're singing by yourself to a bunch of backing tracks pretty regularly, uh, this might be worth it to you. I don't have to have any uh, internet. Let me just say that, that if you're in a situation where there's no Wi-Fi available, you should be able to run this Sten separation without access to the internet. So everything you need is contained within the program itself. So if you're in a pinch, if you're somebody that does solos a lot and you need those backing tracks, stem separation might be definitely a way to go. There is a possibility where, like they talk about in some of the promotions, that you can take these stems and then you can remix with them, like making samples out of the drum samples themselves. I don't think that that's very passable at the current state. So if I took, like earlier, if I took those drum tracks and I tried to use them in a different song, it would definitely be better if I just created a new drum track rather than trying to copy and paste that over because there's so much... There's so many artifacts involved with the way that the stem separation is doing this. I don't think that it's going to pass. You're not going to want to take the drums and stem separate them into a new session. Just create new drum samples. But all in all, it's okay. <laughs> 